So you're all familiar with different forms of energy, such as potential energy and kinetic energy. Potential energy, for example, is the energy associated uh, with an object that's uh, high above the ground, whereas kinetic energy results from dropping that object as it accelerates towards the ground. And you know by conservation of energy, the initial potential energy of that object has all been uh, translated into its kinetic energy. But there's a third form of energy known as internal energy that's a little bit more difficult to conceptualize. And this energy uh, compri is comprised of the kinetic energy of all the molecules within a system. And not only does it consist of their kinetic energies, but also consists of the energies associated with their vibrations or their interactions, for example, if they're present. And this is much too difficult, and it's really not necessary to contribute to keep track of everything, all these different molecules. But what we find is that the internal energy correlates with the material's temperature. If you raise the temperature of two different substances by the same amount, the amount that their internal energy increases really depends on their molecular structure and any molecular interactions that might be present. So here I've got a box and I'm going to draw a whole bunch of little molecules and these are all uh, molecules of some kind of ideal gas. And the molecules, if I drew it, each molecule has a particular structure. There might be two atoms involved with it. But the internal energy is comprised of the kinetic energy. All of these molecules are moving in different random directions and they're bouncing off the walls of this container and they may or may not be bouncing off of one another. But we need to f somehow figure out the total amount of kinetic energy of these molecules and figure out the total amount of energy comprised of these molecules vibrating and, and jiggling, just the mole molecular structure itself. That's what's known as the internal energy, and we're just going to lump it into some, uh, some number. It might have units of kilojoules or if it was intensive, kilojoules per kilogram of this substance. So to further illustrate this, I've drawn a piston cylinder device, and there's a brick sitting on top of the piston, and the piston and the cylinder are completely frictionless, and I've got two stops here that prevent the brick from falling down, and within this cylinder there is an ideal gas of some sort, and I'm drawing the individual molecules of this gas. And what I'm going to do is remove these stops. And once I've removed the stops, the frictionless uh, piston within the cylinder, the brick falls to a new equilibrium position. It increases the pressure of that gas. So here the brick is at its lower equilibrium position. And my rhetorical question for you is, where did the potential energy of that brick go? It dropped down a certain distance. And where did that, ener where did that potential energy of the brick go? The potential energy lost by the brick is equal to the mass of the brick times g times the height that it fell. And I'm curious, where did this energy, into what form did it, did it go? And it turns out it goes into the internal energy of these molecules. And when the brick fell a distance h, it increased the internal energy of the system by an amount mgh. And we use the symbol u to represent the internal energy. And the increase in u, we could say, is delta u. And delta u, in this case, is positive. So when the brick fell, it increased the internal energy of the molecules, thereby increasing their temperature.